Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and the iPhone 12 Pro has been out for a little bit over a month and I've been using it quite a bit and so I wanted to talk about how it's held up durability wise, how the signal is and talk about whether or not you should still pick one up or just give my overall thoughts on it. Now this video is in 4K HDR and if it looks all blown out, you wanna make sure you're using this on an iPhone or watching this on an iPhone, on an iPad, or a Mac, but using Safari. Don't use Chrome as it doesn't seem to understand the HDR footage properly. And the same is true on Windows. So Chrome has some issues with different monitors on Windows showing it all blown out, but it should work fine on any Apple device as well as Windows with an HDR monitor or an Apple TV even. So hopefully it looks good for you. Now everything's set in auto and I'm recording from an iPhone 12 Pro. So the footage that you're seeing now is being recorded with an iPhone 12 Pro as you can see here in the camera. So there's the camera, I'm using a separate microphone. Now, as far as the overall durability, well, the iPhone 12 Pro has been holding up well. I've been using a case on it. This is Apple's leather case, and it seems to protect the phone well. I'm not using a screen protector, and I don't have a single scratch on the screen. And while glass obviously still scratches, and I did get a small scratch on the iPhone 12, this case either protected it enough or it's just better glass. So while it's supposed to be more drop resistant, it seems to be holding up better than the iPhone 11 Pro did at this particular point. It doesn't have a single scratch on it anywhere to be found. So it looks pretty good. I'll zoom in here and there's not a single scratch anywhere on it. So that's good. Now, durability wise, one thing I really appreciate is the squared off edges. It makes it easier to hold on to, less prone to dropping in my experience. And I think it just adds a more premium feel to the device overall. At least that's my personal opinion on it. It feels very premium because of it. It feels like a solid slab. And I really like that about the phone. Now, as far as reception, a lot of people ask, how is reception since it has a Qualcomm modem? You can see it has 5G. I'm using T-Mobile here, and my reception has been phenomenal. In fact, I've not had a single dropped call with this particular phone or any of the iPhone 12 series for that matter. So that part, it's really good. I'm glad to see that Apple switched to Qualcomm. I think they're much better modems and they're doing well. And the same is true for Wi-Fi. Now, I know some people have had issues with Wi-Fi depending on what router they have. I personally have not had a single issue. Everything seems to load fast and I have no issues with that whatsoever. Now, as far as the display, the display does use PWM to control brightness. You'll see we're at full brightness now. You can actually see some of the lines scrolling by because it's bright outside and everything's on auto being recorded. But the PWM from the display doesn't bother my eyes on this display as compared to say an iPhone 10 or 10s Max. It was better with the iPhone 11, but with this phone, I find it's even better. So Apple either bumped up the rate of PWM so it doesn't bother my eyes. So I think that's a good thing for those that are sensitive to it. It just means we can see higher frame rates generally and we're more sensitive to flickering lights because of that that are at slower speeds. Not everyone can see it. You can't see it with your eyes, but it's definitely a concern as it can cause you to feel nauseated or cause headaches. And this display doesn't seem to do that. Now, the overall use of the phone, well, it's pretty good. It's very fast. Of course, that A14 Bionic should be fast. There's no issues there. Scrolling, of course, is smooth. Going into applications, RAM management is great. Reopening applications, reopening applications like YouTube. I had this closed in the background, but in general, everything works really fast as far as that. I don't have any complaints. The camera is super fast. See if I spin it around there. The camera is super fast. It reacts quickly. If you want to snap a photo, you're not going to miss that photo because of a slow a slow phone or I was going to say computer so the overall feel experience and everything else is really premium and I have no issues whatsoever the only issue might be with software updates and we've had a couple we've had a couple updates since the beginning of this particular device and some are to fix small issues like on the iPhone 12 mini for example so you'll see it's checking for an update this one's actually on a beta and there you can see the PWM most prominent you you can see those streaks through there based on the shutter speed of the camera. And so because of that, like I said, it's not a problem. You can't see it with your eyes, but a camera can pick it up. The software is still a little bit buggy. I'd say we're leaps ahead of where we were last time at this point with the iPhone 11 Pro. So the 12 is fantastic. And of course the cameras are incredible. The forward facing camera and the rear cameras both have 4K HDR in Dolby Vision. So it's pretty amazing what you can get out of these cameras and the microphones I'm recording from now. 
And of course the rear cameras are amazing. I've been recording the entire video from it, but now I'm recording with the audio as well. And everything from the regular to the ultra wide to the telephoto is an amazing camera. This is all shot held handheld and I'm just walking around with it. So stabilization is great. The overall quality is fantastic. And you could use this as your main YouTube camera for this or for vlogging. So whatever you want to use it for, it's definitely adequate as long as you have good lighting. Of course, outside, you can't really tell the difference. Inside, if you have bright lights, it looks great either way. And most people would not be able to tell that you're using an iPhone versus a mirrorless camera. They're really impressive cameras, not only for video, but photo, of course, of well as well. Now, as far as battery life overall, battery life is okay. It should get you through a day, but five and a half to six hours seems to be pretty consistent on the 12 Pro. And for some people that won't be enough, but honestly, for most, it should be fine. You may have to charge it at the end of the day, depending on how heavy of a user you are. That's using social media, listening to music, listening to podcasts, maybe using YouTube from time to time, using the camera, using video. That will get you about five and a half to six hours. If you're just watching video, on an airplane maybe that you've already downloaded you can get many more hours but just doing regular things online using safari mail messages you're going to get about six hours or so now the overall size of this phone is pretty perfect for most people. It fits comfortably in my very large hands. It's easy to hold on to. And I was going back and forth if I should use the 12 Pro or the 12 Pro Max. And I decided to go with the 12 Pro Max for a couple different reasons. The 12 Pro Max is larger, so it has that nice larger display, has a little bit better camera, and has 10 to 12 hours of battery life. So that extra battery life with the 12 Pro Max isn't much of a big deal to me, but mostly that larger screen and the better camera is why I wanted it personally. The battery, I can charge it throughout the day. I'm in an office most of the time, so it's not an issue. But for those that want more battery, I would definitely go with that unless you can get a battery case for the 12 Pro eventually. But currently, Apple doesn't offer that. Overall, the 12 Pro is a fantastic phone. I think it's a huge upgrade as far as its design from year to year. I love the squared off edges. I just think it's a much nicer, higher quality feeling design. I personally don't like the rounded edges, so this I think is a much better phone. A couple things I've noticed though is the buttons on the edge seem to be a little bit more mushy to me on all the iPhone 12s I have. It's not bad, but it's more mushy than we had with, say, the iPhone 11. Those felt a little bit more clicky to me. That's just something I noticed personally. The volume buttons feel the same, but it's something to do with, and I'm taking screenshots, it's something to do with the power button. Maybe because it's a little bit larger, it just feels like it's a less clicky feeling that I'm used to. Other than that, the phone is phenomenal. I highly recommend it. The 12 mini is great. All of the 12s are great this year, and durability, I think it's going to be better over time than even the 11 Pro series. Let me know what you think about them, though, in the comments below. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.